Fitzy here, back at it again. Got something interesting for you this time. It's not rust repair. I'm gonna hand make a hood scoop for a Mustang using uh, the roof skin off an import. Gonna be interesting, stick around. Okay, let's get started here. What we have here is a Fox Body Mustang. Um, has an LS in it with a turbo. Uh, the plan is, is that uh, we're going to make a hood scoop for this now. And uh, like we've priced up hoods for these um, here in Newfoundland uh, in order to convert it into Canadian and to ship it here. We were talking well over a thousand bucks to land a hood here. Um, we're going to make what they call a bubble hood, hood scoop. Bubble hood scoop. Um, <clears throat> I got pictures here uh, consisting of uh, all the different styles. You see a lot of them on drag cars. And that around now is a newer style hood scoop. So this is the style we're going to run with. Uh, but, but what we're going to do is we're going to make one. Right? And how we're going to go about making one is we're going to use a rough skin. Off around a 2008 high on the Elantra. Touring it's off of. We picked this up for uh, off a friend of ours. We had a bunch of scrap cars around. So uh, as you can see it's a nice crown panel. You can see, and it's got a nice shape to it. You can run around and if you look at it this way it's got a nice flow to the front of it there. So uh, that's the makings of a, a hood scoop. So let's get started. He has plans in the future to uh, do an upgrade on the intake and put a larger intake on it. And uh, we're back to doing some measurements and we realized that the intake that he's decided to go with is gonna be about 12 inches high from this point here. So it's about there, so I'm gonna make the hood roughly about this high so it gives it room to grow to be able to put a larger intake on it. Now eventually I'm going to be cutting all this off the hood, but for now I'm leaving it all there for the structural strength because one thing I've noticed in the past is when you start cutting the back out of the hood, everything starts to fall. So my plan is here is to make the top of the scoop, the sides of the scoop, um, get it all put together, fitting together, possibly get it welded together, and I'm sure if I'm going to do it on or off the car yet. And then I'm going to remove it off the hood, and then um, I'm going to remove the center of the hood and then do the cutting butt on the sides here. I'm going to take it in on these edges here because of strength there, so it'll uh, minimize warp each, right? And it'll be on an angle such as that coming up to the scoop. Might be a bit more on that. So, first thing I got to do now is I got to sit down now, so I got to figure out how wide I want the top strip because the top strip going right up over the hood is going to be the same and it's going to meet on the windshield about here somewhere. So, I'm going to go ahead now and uh, draw up something and see what I come up with. Basically, all I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to take some masking tape and just lay it out and just uh, play around with it and see if I can see something that, that uh, I like the look of, just to get some idea. Okay. Good reference point. Nice just thing about having the, the old black paint on the hood is I got references to go by. So I'm thinking uh, I kind of like that. I don't want the center of the hood to be too wide because I've noticed a lot of these here when you come up with them. I know now that when I bring up this on this angle here, I want the scoop to come up to me this here somewhere. See? So this will probably meet this here on the scoop.
got the center line made out there now. So I decided I'm going to go with the, the top section 80, 18 inches wide. This is one inch wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. Uh, nine, half of 18 is nine. And that's one inch. So I got to take a, a half inch off of one. So I'm going to come over here eight and a half inches here. And eight and a half inches here. Hope that was confusing enough for you. And that's 18 inches. Do the same on the back. Drop the tape on around us. Eight and a half inches to the edge of the tape here. That will be my width of the entire scoop. I'll just double check all the measurements now, make sure that's all eight and a half up through there and down through there. And I'll mark it and I'll start cutting that section out. The reason why I'm taking out the center is that I want to use these two sections here as the sides of the scoop. And I'm taking the full length of it. The trick with these are is, uh, you had to use an SUV roof because it's a longer roof. Uh, these bubble scoops, as they call them, they go into the windshield of the car so they cover the cowl and they're like 55, 56 inches long. So we needed a long enough roof and a regular car roof wouldn't do it. So we had to find an SUV or something to, uh, to start with. So I'm going to go ahead now, double up the measurements and uh, I'm going to start cutting that out. Marking this edge like so because I'm going to use the tape as my guide when it starts to cut it. And I found in the past that when the heat starts getting into the metal, the tape will want to let go. And at least having a mark there now, I won't lose my line. <laughs> I went ahead now and got the motor covered over with a fireproof blanket. Uh, one thing that I know now is this point right here on the car, we want, we're going to want about to have another mm, two or three inches right here. We've already figured it out. And i got to put something along here now to, to give me up to that height. So this will be the, uh, the highest point on the hood. So that when we goes to put the other intake on it, uh, it'll, uh, it'll fit. So I'm going to make up a little bridge there now something that the scoop can lay on and it won't fall down past that point all right just very simple piece of flat scrap steel i got kicking around uh, i got it in my head i'm going to start with five inches at the highest point and i'm going to see what it looks like so all i'm going to do is add a couple of inches on either end uh the hole in the hood is 12 inches wide so i'm going to add 12 inches and five and five and an inch on either side so then i then i can clink it under the hood and that will give me a frame right so all I'm going to do is just like mark out very quickly and simple, one inch, and then measure off five inches, and then we got six, one, two, three, four, five, six, eighteen, 
Then we go five, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five and one inch. Oh, it's exactly 24 inches. And all I'll do now is I'll just cut that off there and I'll bend up them little points there and that'll give me a height. Nothing fancy. Make the short bottom of the same, left and right. And there's my little reference point, my little jig if you want to call it. Make it an even 24. That's where I'm going to put it. I know roughly about, it's in this area here and it's got to be about 4 inches. I'm going to raise it up 5 to give us a lot of room. So, like, I'm not uh, being precise on this and it's just going to fit just so. A reference point. Now when I was to make the scoop up I can lay it on top of that there and uh, I know that I got room in here for the, the new intake. tape on the uh, front of the hood to set it up and I lined it up with the tape I had there now and now I'm going to uh, make sure that is square on back over the hood and uh, I'm going to mount it up front first so that I always got a permanent point to put it back and then I'm going to start short shorten up the back to see where I'm going to go with it. It looks to me to be a bit high. I got one clean coat put in the front corner so it is centered and uh, I got to get it at 17 and 3 16 on this back corner edge it's right there so now I'm going to drill the other hole over here got a point to return to and I know that that center section is square on the hood. <clears throat> now these bubble scoops they don't go straight back like a cowl hood. 
These come back and they fall and go about here and they have a crown edge on it. I'm still thinking that I'm thinking that might be a bit high there for what we're doing with it. It may be uh If I lower that down from there, I gotta cut this back to here somewhere. Let this fall some more. So what I'm gonna have to do is figure out now. I figured like if this is falling here, and I want it to fall here or fall here. I'm pretty sure I think that if I came straight up and the head a little small bit, I'll get it because this is gonna roll because of the roll of the hood. So what I'm gonna do first, now I'm just gonna start creeping up on it. I'm going to take a piece out of it here, probably here somewhere, just so I can get the downward roll on it and uh, see where it falls. Because I figure it's, if I cut this off here, it's going to want to come down here somewhere. And we'll be getting close. So I'm going to haul, say, six inches out of the end of this. The trick to always start with when you're doing this type of hook is to always have a square piece to start with. Uh, and always take your measurements precisely off it. Because as you make things smaller, if you're just rough cutting stuff, It'll, uh, it'll throw everything right out of whack. So I'm just going to take off six inches here now and see where that falls for me. fall and it's starting to come down and it's still a bit high there I want it to come down even more I only want it to here uh, I find some that are too high on the windshield they, they, they haven't got a nice pair of stone right so I'm after kinking that there and I'm gonna get that after and what I'll end up doing then so I'm gonna end up taking another I see I'll take another three inches out of it and uh, I'll cut that three inches out and we'll see what we do. So here's what I come up with. I went and turned around and lowered this bracket one inch. Lower down the hood. I found the hood was too high up on this section right here. And then, of course, that was the first piece I trimmed off. And then I trimmed off three inches. And then I didn't like that. I trimmed off one inch. So now I'm pretty happy with this back here. The only thing I find is that when it comes up here, it goes flat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to raise it up a bit here. Because these are called a bubble hood for a reason. When I put that in there, I get a nicer flow going on the hood. And I think I'm pretty pleased with that there. The way that's going to look there. Going around it. As you can see. I got the dimensions of where I want it to go with the hood. Where I want it to meet on the windshield. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start building these side pieces. Uh, to, to go on the side of it but before I do that I'm gonna make a brace in here similar to this one here that'll hold the back up so then it'll all stay in its own place so I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna make that piece and then uh, start sizing up the side panels I only got nine inches here and I got ten up here on this end here so what I got in my head I got to cut five feet off of this piece so I'm gonna come back past this here and cut all this off but I'm gonna follow this line here just so to keep it even. So when it gets down here, it gets a bit wider. And hopefully I'll be able to get enough out of it to do it. But I'll go off five feet here. And I'll just cut that section out. And we'll do a test fit on that. Our piece down the edge down there, get it to follow the edge and see But the first thing I got to do is got to get it fit back here on the windshield, so I got to cut this on a bit of an angle again. I'm just going to uh, sneak up on it. I got lots of excess up front, so I'm just going to draw a diagonal line like that and just trim it and see how it fits. I went ahead and I trimmed off that corner edge. 
there's going to no test fit in here. All I'm doing is I'm laying it into this edge here, the factory ledge on the hood, and I'm going to put a couple of clink goes in there to hold it in place. Move back as far as I can. So I got lots of uh, wiggle room back here when it comes time to trim it. Coming ahead of it. Like so. And I'm going to trim that now in a couple of spots and see what it's like. Now that I got it mounted along that body line, you come over here and you can see it less resting on the center section here. And what I'm going to start doing here now is I'm going to start trimming up a little bit at a time here to get some of this out of the way. I'm laid on this pin down here, so I got to get that out of the way and let this lay down a bit more. I got to do some work back here because there's a bit of a strain on it because the way the back of the hood wants to go. But uh, it's the style that I'm after. I want that lay right down an angle like that to follow that line. You can see here now the way this comes together like this. So what I got to do now is I got to cut this back this way. So this will roll into this section of the hood here. But as you can see on the back side here, everything seems to be fitting pretty good. It's coming together it's tight there because I haven't got that bottom straightened away. But up along here is coming along pretty good. It's getting there. And you can see the way it goes way up there. But that's because the hood got to roll back. But now you're getting an idea of where it's going. Okay, I got it all trimmed up. I went, up, went back and I went and tidied up and trimmed these back a little bit and cleaned them all up and, you know, fine-tuned a few things here and there, get it so it fit nicer. Because uh, all I'm doing right now is getting uh, three pieces cut out of the design that I'm after because i got a good fit in the line of windshield here. Because my plan is here, I'm going to roll this last half inch on this panel and also on this panel here when it's all said and done. But now that i got this side done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel and I'm going to mount it on the other side backwards and uh, see how it fits. Hopefully that is the same because then all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this piece here over off of that section of the roof there. And uh, I have two sides, of the, the two sides made up and then I can start doing the rolled edge section. All I'm going to do is remove this section here now and I'm going to measure back from the back of the hood. To where that first hole is to for the clink on. So lay it over there, the measuring tape. So I'll just measure back. It is an inch and seven eighths. Inch and seven eighths back. It'll give me an idea of where I want to put that hole. So we come back inch and seven eighths of there. Okay, so I have an idea where that goes. Now all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna place that in place and drill the hole for the back one. That way when it comes time to duplicate the other one, all I got to do is just drill the same hole. So I'll just lay that like so. Just drill that back hole. And then I hit a bit. Now the way I got this set up, I got it so that the bobbin of metal is right on the edge. So all I got to do is just go right along each edge and set it up as I'm going. It's the same. The 
hardest thing when it comes to sheet metal is easiest thing in the world is to make one. But if you got to make two, uh, you're going to get into it. So that's why I'm not taking this too far. That works nice there. That works nice there. <clears throat> the trick is not to take it too far. Uh, because if you go too far and start shaping everything up onto one piece, you're going to end up trying to run into problems. I'm using flat panels here now. I'm trying to duplicate them using the exact same holes in the locations. Trying to make that side look like this side. If you can duplicate each side, you're over uh, miles ahead of the game. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this panel here now, flip it upside down and go over to the old rough skin and cut out a panel the same as this one here. Take your time with it. You'll get it. There you have it. Do we remain the same? Right up, the holes in the same locations. So now I got a left and a right to go on from. So from here right in, now I also got two panels of the same. So now I'll start doing the roll edge on. I did a quick mock up now to show you the three pieces. I'm very pleased with the way it's going so far, the way everything's fitting together. Now, the next step, now that I got the three pieces made and I'm happy with everything being centered and the height and all that, next thing I got to do now is work on joining these two panels together. But what I want to do, I want to roll this edge and roll this edge. I don't want a squared edge on this here. So I'm going to roll this one here and roll this one here and let them overlap a small bit. So that way there's a little rolled edge all the way around the whole panel. And it also adds strength when it comes to welding it up because this is thin metal. So uh, I'm hoping I don't get too much warpage on it, but uh, we'll see. 
Right, so now, uh, next thing to do is to set it up now to roll these edges. All I'm going to do now is give myself an edge allowing here to roll from. So now I've got it marked off, I'm going to try to keep my roll below the, on this side of the black marker. So not to get uh, too far into that there. And all I'm going to use is my uh, T-dolly and the hammer. I'm just going to lay that there like that and just roll that edge just a bit at a time all the way along. All it is, I clamped it down to give myself a bit of support. And all I'm going to do now is just go along the edge of it here. And holding my thumb against it so I got something to go off of. And just slowly start rolling it. Keeping below that black mark. You see me tapping on it, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this inner edge here, this one right here, I'm trying to make sure that's nice and straight because if you roll this over too far, this edge will want to come in more, so you try to keep it half straight, it's hard to see there, but you can see me going right along the edge, but you can see the rolled edge with the lip on it, so this is a consistent roll, because if you roll the edge too much, you'll move this in, it'll throw everything off, right, so you just keep checking with it. And just go right along the entire thing. You can see it better there. There you go. See where the rolled edge is nice and straight going down through there. So now I got the both sides of these sanded and I'm ready to go and put this all back together. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a reference line right down this edge because when I overlap, I'm not going to know where my edge is to. So I'll move my reference, li reference line in 3 eighths of an inch or so, just like this here, and use the marker, run my finger along it. So when I start adding the side piece on, I'll have something, that, a guide to go by to let me know where I'm to. Fancy, as long as I can see it. Put one of them on both sides.
peeked it under the windshield because they found it was uh, sliding from side to side. So, and that fixed that. Talked about this reference line. This is what I'm talking about. You can see this edge here. I got this line to go from. I can push that in and out there. So my plan is now is to keep the same distance right along where I'm putting this as I'm butt welding it on. So I make sure that the distance from here to here is always the same on both sides. So I got something to go by. Because if you never had a line or anything there, you'd be pushing in up here and then you'd have it pulled out down here and you wouldn't have it. And this would be like this going all the way along. So what I'm going to do next now, uh, this is ready to weld together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it here in the middle on both sides. I'm going to work out from both sides at the same time. I'm not going to weld one full side and then do the other because when I does that, something's going to go happen over here that's going to fall off and I'm just going to work my way back and forth. I got an engine blanket over, or I got a wire blanket over the engine. So that's all covered up. I'm not worried about this windshield. It's all busted over there. We got to put another windshield in this. So we got to replace that anyway, so I'm not concerned about it. So, but if you got a good windshield, of course, you're going to have to cover it over. So, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here and start setting this up and start welding together so, so much of this here, going over and doing that side, and go moving back and forth until I get this whole section welded together. Back here and up here is a lot of twisting involved in it. So, I want to have strength in the middle before I start twisting the back and the front. Let's see what happens now. I let it go. Is it going to flop through all the place or is it going to hold the shape? I want to take it off now because I want to dolly up everything before I start cutting the mold. Be gentle, be gentle, be gentle. That's not half bad. I'll probably show you what I'm talking about here now. When you look up across that there, you can see that this here rolls in. I want to flatten off this here so a bit more. And I got a spot up here I got to work with. Where's he at? Right here. That's a bit low there. I got to clean that up. But over on this side here looks pretty good. All the way down. Just got to flatten this one off. Probably easier to show you with a roller. Right. When you lay that across there like that, you can actually see how much is up, see? So I'm going to dolly that so it comes half flat there before I start cutting the button. But uh, I'm very pleased with it. It's holding the shape good. 
All I'm going to do now is go down with a dolly and just slightly hammer all this here flat so I get the nice roll on it. I'm working way longer so I'm happy with it. One thing about the newer metals, uh, it doesn't take much to move it. So, gentle blows. You don't need to uh, pound on it. As long as I'm hitting that there, all that is moving on me. And it's going where I want it to. It's nice there now. Just subtle taps. People will try to make these scoops, like make steel scoops, on the vehicle, and like cut the center out of the hood and raise it up. But that geometry throws that off because when you bring a scoop up, it goes back on the back, so then you have to put a strip across the back. Uh, I prefer to make the scoop like this here, have so I can take it off the car. If I run into any issues with this here, I can repair it now. As you can tell, I can do this now. The last thing is going to be welded on is in along here and along the front and the bottom. That's the easy part. In my mind, it's getting this here set up right and getting all this here well, having this half smooth and this half smooth without getting too much warping in it. But uh, I'm pleased with it so far. Just something to keep in mind it's better to build it off the car than it is on the car. Okay, I've had this off now a few times. Um, just basically uh, fitting it, getting everything to fit nicer and letting go a couple spot welds back here because this wasn't sitting where I liked it to be and stuff like that. So now I'm ready to start uh, cutting and buttoning this now. So I'm going to start on the back side here and start working my way forward and start cutting and buttoning on both sides. Um, you would think you could probably do this off the car, take it off and lay it on the bench, but the problem with this when you start, when you take this off, everything relaxes and you start welding this, this is not going to want to go there. I'm going to leave it on the car to do this so that nothing moves from where it's supposed to be before I weld it on the car. I'll take it off to grind it and whatnot, but uh, for uh, welding purposes, I'm going to leave it on the car. Now I got it all cut and bought all the way up along there as well. There's the other side. Now what I got to do now is some of this is still not where I like to have for it to be, so I want to dolly it all off. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna knock the head off each one of these here. So when I do turn it upside down and start dollying it, this here is not gonna interfere with my dolly. So I'm gonna grind all these here flush now and uh, on both sides so I can dolly do the dolly work off it.
Here it is off. Wasn't much left of this. I got it all dollied up and I'm after grinding in here for one particular reason. These panels are very thin, it's on a high end. I know for a fact if I start welding and grinding this on the outside flush, I'm going to run into issues. So I'm going to do something a little bit different on this one here. Is what I'm going to do, I'm going to do my first welds all on the inside. I want to leave the weld in here. I don't want to have too much work on the outside of it. I know as I'm going to have to fill it, right? But if I weld it on the outside and then grind it all off, I know for a fact I'm going to be grinding this stuff really thin and it's just going to make it weak. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it in here. I'm going to just knock the head off it. I'm not going to take too much of the welding off it so there's lots of strength where the welding's to. And all I'm going to do is dress the outside of it and any spots that I think there's like uh, um, gaps or anything like that, I'll just weld them in on from the top side and grind them down, but I'll have the strength on the bottom side. Um, like trying to finish this like I finished the, uh, the earlier metal, the 20 gauge metal, it's a bit trickier because it's so thin, it won't take much, a bit of heat and it burns through. So I'm going to go ahead, same as before, I'm going to spot weld every inch and then come back, cool it off, come back and then spot weld next to every other inch and just do that as I'm going. Being very, very careful with this slight stuff so I don't warp it up. So Let's see how I make out here now. This is basically what you're seeing. You see the reflection going back through it. It does look like just uh, very much warpage, you know? Down the sides. This is what I got down here. You can see what I got the way I got this welded up here. I never welded it or nothing. You, we can come back here if we want to and we can re-weld all this and finish it. But this is like 24 gauge metal and I'm thinking that if I goes fooling around with any of this, I'm going to end up warping it all this. Or when I go to grind it off, I'm going to end up grinding out this outer edge or this part here too thin. I'm going to leave this just like it is up along here and it's, it's got a nice finish to it there now. And like a little skin of uh, fiberglass over that and filler. Perfect. Now that I got everything figured out, what I got to do is if you notice that the, the scoop was laying on the panel here. I got to have this so this raises up off of this so it's not actually touching it. So what I got down here now, I got it marked on both sides. What I got to do now is I got to build a frame inside of this here to support this and support this down here. So what I went and did, I need to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount this to the bench. The scoop but i gotta push it apart this far 
it's set this up like this because when you list this go everything goes in so i marked it here and i marked it on the other side as well so then i got reference points here and here which i'm going to mark with a marker so then i can uh, go up over on the bench and uh, mount it to the bench over here you can see i got these lines here i measure from here over to there and i got uh, it was 32 and a quarter inches so all i did is i come over on the bench and i marked on the bench right here and come over and marked it over here at 32 and a quarter inches and had that line is where the edges to i welded it onto the bench there and i welded it onto the bench there now i got the back end of it all secure the back end of it, i'm gonna have to build something in here now to support that across the back here's what i got done i took a scrap piece of metal which was another project i had before remember the door bottom check out the video on that one anyway I, I'm reusing that now. I got it uh, cut, marked out, cut like this here, so it's shaped like the back end of this here. And I'm going to cut the piece out of it. And my plan is, is I'm going to put a, uh, a bottom in it and a top section on it to give it strength. And then I'm going to put a few holes in this here. So I'm going to go cut that out now and start test fitting it. I got that all trimmed out and test fitted. And uh, it fits up there pretty good and everything. And now I've got to find a way to mount this upper. And all I went and did is I went through my scrap pile and I had this strip, strip of metal here. And uh, I throw nothing out. And uh, that's been over there stood up in the corner for, I'd say, six months. And so I cleaned the paint off of that. All I'm going to do here now is I'm going to mount that like so on that edge there. And then rotate that all the way around there so there's an outer structure on it. As you can see, it's all I done. Every few inches, I went and uh, spot welded it on. Still haven't cut it off. But you can see now I got a, a decent, strong little structure going on here. I have it clamped in place now over here. And over here, you can see the way how nice it fits up along the top here, top edge. And the bench is right here. So what I got to do is I got to trim this back a bit along here now. So I can put a flange along here. My idea... The more I think about this, I like to have it so that this section here rests on the cowl and I'll trim it off on an angle here just to give the illusion that it's sitting over here and it's up off the cowl. But leave this section here alone and have it so that there's a brace going across here much the same way as I've done up here that rests on the cowl. So I'm going to trim that up and I'm going to make a piece to go across here now. Clean up another strip. I head down the corner. So I got the brace. I got to cut it off on the corners here. And round it out on the edge of it. And all I'm going to do is lay it on top of that now. And center it up. And weld that right to that plate there. Now you can see i got to put up a place there. It's just going to rest on the, uh, the hood here. So now what I want to do, I'm going to put some uh, holes in this now just to dress it up a bit. And uh, make it look nicer. You haul this out here, you can see what I got here going on. That's only 22 gauge metal that's got an edge put on it and it's nice and solid. You can't bend it or twist it or anything like that. So, like you know, the strength comes in the structure, not so much in the, the material you use, right? You make things strong with light metal if you just put it together, right? So, every time you make an I beam out of anything, you uh. You bring strength to it. Do you ever have trouble trying to figure out centers? Here's a little thing I've been doing for years, and uh, it's just something simple. Is I got uh, a me regular measuring tape. I got four inches there. I got eight inches over here, right there. And on the other side, I put four sixteenths or five sixteenths. Five sixteenths and five sixteenths to the four. Five sixteenths to the eight. Six is in the middle. All I done is I marked the center out. And that would be the first hole. You can use a hole saw for this. Uh, I have hole, pu hole punch tools here. So I'm going to use them. And then all I did is I just uh, played around with it till I thought I found where the center would be. And I just marked off three and a half inches to that hole. And then three and a half inches to that hole. And same with over on the other side. And that way all of them are evenly spaced apart. So now I'm going to just drill them out.
I've never seen one of these before. It's a uh, for punching holes. I picked this up a number of years ago at a yard sale. And uh, they're great for uh, doing the gauges and cars and whatnot. But it's just a simple setup. It just goes together like that. And, when, and the two metals squishes it through and it cuts it off. I'll show you now. All I do is like clamps it in the vice. Has a hole drilled in that. Drops it down for the hole. And the hole's a bit tight, which is good. Bolt out to that. You can use the drill with a hole saw. Uh, I just find you get these cleaner. The, the hole saw kind of has a tendency to bounce around a bit. The hole is not precise in the middle. for the crack. One, two. There we go. There you have a nice little hole. Now, haven't got a dimple die, so I've got to make my own. I got a piece of pipe here. I have the uh, thing I cut the hole with. I have top off a tank, and I got a bit of tape. All I'm going to do is I'm going to, I got to find my center, so I can eyeball it. Nothing fancy. So all I do is I just take this down, I'll lay this over this, like so, and center it up, so it looks centered. Again, I'm only winging it. You can be really fancy with this stuff, when it comes down to it. It really doesn't matter. Overthink it too. Now we got that. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this here, and lay that on top of that there, line up them black marks like so. Take my round ball thing, lay it on top of that. Take my big persuader. A couple of taps. And here you have a dimple die. Here's where I'm to. I got the brace made up. It's all working. And I came over here and figured out where I wanted it to go. It's sitting roughly about there on the cowl section. And I noticed that it's back roughly about two inches back from this here. Now I had to lower the center of the cowl down because the back of the hood on these is not flat. As you can see, it's sort of around. So, but where it's all open back here, all I want to do is to rest here and then rest over there. So I just lowered the section here a little bit. So then come over here, this is what I got done over here. I took the measuring tape then, I marked where that edge of that place was to, the edge of the cowl, and I marked up here and I measured back two inches and I marked it. Now, I fit the panel in place, like so, and that's where that's gonna go, like that, roughly. Now, what the thing with this is, I don't want to go welding this on too much. I'm gonna weld it right here, where it's been welded to before, I'm going to weld it on this end here, and weld it on this end here. I'm not going to weld it nowhere in here, or nowhere in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some um, seam sealer now, put three little blobs there, and a little blob there, and then push it into it, clamp it in place, and then weld it in a few small spots there where it's structurally strong, or on the end where it's out there. And then between the seam sealer holding it and the, uh, and the welds here, it should be solid in place, and it'll keep it from rattling up against this here. So, 
This helps add strength to it. Makes it uh, more rigid. It's all never done from the factory. Squishing out. Put that there. Clamp that there. There it is, welded in place. I welded it here and here on both sides, and up on this end here, and up on this end here. And the uh, the black uh, urethane now will hold all this in place here, and it'll give uh, strength to the rest of it as well. I didn't want to get any welding this here because it would have warped all this up in amongst all this here, and same without here on the sides. You got to watch doing this, like where I've already welded it here and here. The, there's strength there, so I said I'll run a bead there and a bead there, and more or less the hood is going to be held on with that I went ahead and reinstalled it what I'm going to work on now is I'm going to work on getting this here fitting nicer and along the windshield here and you get the windshield I'll bite out of it all together now we removed that yesterday I just got a laid in place there now until we get this all done and put the new windshield in it so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to concentrate on these side sections here I'm going to raise them up and then have this so it's just barely uh, there's a clearance there so when it comes time to paint the car uh, this here won't be rubbing all the time so I'm going to take this off now and put a roll lip on both sides here I'm going to mark it first and cut it so I get a nice uh, straight edge on it and do the same on the other side I got it marked here this is the gap between the hood and the cowl but I'm going to end it where the hood was too I have it marked on both sides I'm going to cut up there probably a quarter of an inch or so and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this lower section here, I'm going to fold it in over and put a nice...
as you can see, I got the two lips bent over here now, and uh, you know, I just use basic stuff. I laid this piece of angle iron across the front of the bench because uh, the edge of my bench is pretty rough with grinder marks and everything, and I just wanted a sharp edge to hammer down in just so I wouldn't be beaten into the dents. Like if you had a wooden bench, this is all you'd need is to clamp that onto the wooden bench. And then a couple pieces of scrap, a piece of angle iron, old ruler. The reason why I do the ruler thing is because uh, trying to get it rolled over onto onto itself, sometimes you'll end up damaging the outer edge of it. So you use this ruler to protect the outer edge and you hammer it to this here to bring it down. Then once you get it rolled over, just turn around and flatten it out. But uh, that's basically it. I'm gonna go over and test fit this down, see what it's like. As you can see now, uh, the gap is here. It's a little bit tighter there. I'll work that now when I get to the, the, the back end of it straightened away here. Uh, I may have to change the angle of this a small bit more again, but I can do that after the fact because uh, I got to get more strength into it in order to uh, get this to work right. I may have to cut and grind and weld well this corner and there'd be a lot of strength in it then when I can grind it, but I can't do it right now. But what I'm doing next now is this rolled edge. There's the windshield. I'm touching the windshield there. It's hard to see. All right. So I got to cut off this lip here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll that right around. Just have it so that there's a gap. I can pretty well just roll my finger right down around it through the windshield there. All the way around. I got to trim off a little tiny bit there. You can see that. Because she's touching in the middle there, but when I rolls this edge is going to bring it back to here, which should be lots of clearance on the glass. So I'm going to trim that up and roll them edges now. Went ahead, cut off them edges along here, all the way along. I cut the corners out of it. Uh, it's kind of hard to roll a corner on an edge that's rolled like this here. I'll make them after. And same with down this corner here, where I rolled this lip in underneath. I had to remove the lip on the inside here so I can roll this in underneath it. So I'll trim this back a little tiny bit more. Should be cut on an angle and the inside one as well. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start rolling these edges. Here you have the roll lip all the way along. I can get my finger in along that edge there and along that edge there. It's been pretty good. Now this corner, I'm not happy with it. As you can see here, there's a, uh, a gap here and then it fades away. So I'm going to have to cut this and uh, re-weld it. I went ahead and I cleaned up this lip and you can see the, uh, the roll lip that I had here and over here I ended up having to cut it off I chopped it off here because it faded out this originally went up this way so now I got it all cleaned up so what I gotta do now is I gotta make a little lip to go in along here to give it strength plus also down here I got to in this spot here and this spot here right and I gotta do the same thing over here so I'm gonna go ahead now and just make a little lip I'll show you how I'm gonna make that there now to go on that there Scrap piece of steel, lay on the back side of it, move down a bit, make sure you're over here, lots of access there, and just trace it out. Now, oh my god Tony, what are you doing? Alright, so that goes down this way. Never mind, they're up there. 
So this is the sheet that has got to be on the outside edge. Now I want the lip to go on the inside. If you cut this here, it will be it won't be right because of the lip. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my lip down here. Come in parallel to that. Again, I'm never fussy with it. I can be real fancy with this and no. Now I'll just cut along that line there and that'll fit in there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that there. i mark that there. Put that over the top of it. I'm happy with it. And then I'll mark that there. And I'll mark that there. Now we're happy that we're at two. I'm going to go ahead and weld two of them on. a tack welded it on there, there and there. So now that I got the piece in place and I got a nice little lip along the edge, I'm gonna flip it over and out and trim it off. Propped up on a stander now so you can see it better. But you can see there's the inside lip and the edge there. All I'm going to do now is I'm just going to weld that entire edge right along there, take my time, weld it, and I'll grind and dress it then after the fact. Okay, I got the lips all done. New lip put all the way on, weld it on there, coming along here, got them done. Coming along here, got them done. And up here, got them done. All I did is I just welded the lip on, the lip edge, and uh, I just grinded it down. And smoothed it off and dressed it up so now it actually looks like the lip goes right on around it but that is actually a welded on piece right on both sides right along here so now i got that done i'm getting close to the point now where i'm finished what i'm going to do with that i'm going to start uh, prepping it to weld it on so let's do one last test fit that's a nice fit there now going along there it's not touching it it's up above it i got the edge coming off here i'm going to weld that solid there and along there and I got a nice clearance here, going off here and up along the windshield here, and across the top. Over here now, I can show you even better. I had to dolly some, some stuff, so you can just slide down and eat that there, see? But it's not touching that. And of course, it's up along here, gap along the windshield, along there. So I'm happy with that now. So that's basically where it's going to sit, every time it's mounted on the car. So now what I got to do is I got to uh, weld it on to the hood. But the first thing I got to do now is I got to take this off. I got to scribe the mark and I got to remove so much of this inner structure. Here's what we got going on here. I got the frame over here that comes out to about right here underneath. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, I'm just going to cut it off here and I'm going to weld this to this. I'm not going cutting and budding every bit of this hood. You're going to run into major issues cutting and budding a hood. Uh, because it's such a long flat panel up front here I'll cut and butt I'll cut and butt back to here I'll cut this along here and what I'm going to do is a frame an inner frame I'll show you now and I'm going to weld to the frame here and leave this here and then what I'll do is I'll seam seal this edge here for strength all right so here's what I have as you can see there's a frame going right along up along in the front here and along here I want to leave that there all the way around I'm going to cut everything right tight to it all the way along here and I'm going to plug weld it from the top side to give it strength all the way around so then that's done and i'm not going to remove nothing from here but up here in front i'll remove everything out of there i don't want um any debris getting in there it would be an issue and of course back here i'm going to leave this frame in here and cut all this out some people would want to remove this frame and cut all that out and butt weld it all i can tell you now you're going to run into a nightmare um it is a steel hood 
uh, welding the center of hoods is much the same as welding roofs. It is a tricky thing to do. Uh, with all the reinforcement and everything is here now, it's going to make it easier to weld together. Here's what I got done. I got the outer roof skin caught right off back to this brace. It goes right along the inside structure. This is the way the top looks. Got it all cleaned off. Everything underneath the scoop and where it's going to be welded to. I'll be welding the scoop along here. And I'm going to be leaving this. And what I'm going to do is get from the inside. Then I'm going to seam seal this edge here. So no moisture gets down between the two panels. All the way along, up along here. Now up here in the front, what I got done is I'm going to be cutting this and budding and cutting in the front of it. Because I don't want no moisture trapped up here. I just want this left open and the way it was. So I cut this back here, as you can see. Back into the line here and here in the middle. I cut it back past the line so that when I cut this piece out, it's easier to get this piece out than try to make two of them out of, out of the one, right? Make two of them out. Uh, also, what I'm doing here now is I have uh, holes drilled, spot well holes drilled. I'm going to actually weld the hood skin right to the frame underneath it to give it some uh, rigidity, make it stronger. Because uh, with that scoop on it now, where it's a pin on hood, it's always going to be wanting to do this. So the stronger I can make it, the better it is. So... When you weld the outer skin to the inner frame, uh, it all becomes one that kind of stiffens it up a bit. Trick to it is, I would not be doing this like it is here laid out on this sawhorse. To weld these on, the best place to do them is on the car. All right, I got all them spot welded up. Grind it off, all dressed up, ready to go. So all that then now is one piece with that in the inner structure. So now I'm going to... Uh, I got the scoop all cleaned up, so now I'm going to mount the scoop on it now and get it mounted back on with the Clicos and then start spot welding it around. I got it all tacked on. That's where she's going to live. All the way on that across the front here now on the cotton butt that. We're up the sides, I'm just going to weld it on into the corner. Okay. Looks good along across the windshield, across the cowl. It don't look half bad here. It won't need a lot of uh, body work done to it. The, uh, Looking down across it, not a lot of warpage considering it was so light, such slight metal. Stand back and get the profile of it off the car. And across there as well, the base of the windshield. And then this will be the view from the cockpit. So now all that's left is to uh, weld it on solid. I'm going to go ahead and do that now and get that part done. Here's a closer look at the, the way they were spot welded together. There's two spot welds there, there's two there. First I made a pass all the way down with one and now I'm back again now putting the second spot weld on. So I'm just going along like that and eventually I'll just come back and put another one there until everything's filled up all the way along. Slow process. I'm cooling it between each row of welds. Across the front, I'm going to weld this side and the other side, and then I'm going to come back and then I'm going to cut and bolt the front here. Okay, got all that there welded up on both sides. Let's go on there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish this off here, done. So all I got to do is worry about this front section here. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to grind all this up and uh, get it looking presentable looking. On both sides. All right, I got this here all grinded up. Got to do some touch-ups and everything on it. It's pretty good there now. And I got the front up here all uh, cut and bought, but I haven't got a finished welder yet. I went and had to take the hood off and removed the two sections from the front of it. I think that's where that went, like that, see? Right there. And the other piece went on the other side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, finish welding all this up and grind that up. 
and I got this side grinded up. I'm just going to dress it up then and uh, see what it looks like. And there you have it. Got it all welded up, got it all grinded up. I'll finish it up there now. I didn't want to go. This video is getting really long here now, so you've seen this cotton button many a times now. And I got to weld it all on there. Uh, I'm not doing much else with this. So there it is all done and as you can see I never done no primer no filler work or nothing on this reason for that is uh, this is a car that young Jordan was putting together and our racing season opened up early so we've been thrashing at this now for two weeks or whatever trying to get it ready we've already had it at the track once got a few runs in still working the bugs out of it but uh, we decided to have a bit of fun with it and just leave it Get all the metal work, all the rockers done on it. I was going to do videos on them, but it got too short of a uh, a timeline. So I'm sorry about that. As I told a few of you that I was going to do this quarter section over here. Video on it. If you remember, that was all gone. There's the gas tank door. And of course, up here when I done the, the dump, there was that rocker panel. I ended up putting a complete rocker on it again. And lower quarter section and around the wheel lips. But uh, we're pressed for time. We got it out, got it done. So we're just going to leave it like it is for now for the year. And with any luck, we're going to uh, get it uh, all cleaned up and painted for next season. Uh, we towed with a tow bar, they're not the wheels. He got another set of super lights. For slicks for the back of it. We hauls this with a tow bar. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope the tips were good. And until next time. What? Never saw anybody wipe the car down with dinners before. Gotta get her all cleaned up for the weekend. Get her all ready. Jordan got me put to work cleaning up the disgusting. Uh,